And of course, there's just 11 days to go now, but clearly this election is well underway with millions of people already voting. You speak to a lot of young minority people in particular. Are those people likely to have cast their ballots already? Or are there a lot you speak with who are still undecided either if they want to vote at all and who they would vote for if they do? Well, young people are actually excited about this election. They're excited to vote, but they are very confused. They don't know exactly what to do because they feel so strongly about particular issues like trans rights, like the ongoing war and conflict in Palestine, and mainly with what's going to happen in the U.S., with the economy, with their jobs. So a lot of them, although they are excited, they're not sure what that means for them, for them in, in the future. So, yes, they are casting their ballots, but they're nervous. They're very nervous. So as you describe a number of issues they are nervous about, for Kamala Harris specifically, what of those issues has she not adequately made her case on that she needs to to earn these individuals' votes over the course of the next 11 days? You know, I think she did a really good job in the last few weeks talking about women's rights and abortion. I think that for a lot of young people I've spoken with, if you know they watch the show or listen to the podcast, Call Her Daddy with Alex Cooper, who yeah. I, again, did not know about until speaking to my young people. Um, <laughs> but for a lot of them, that was really reassuring to hear her speak so clearly about how she feels about women's rights and about just folks with uteruses, what it means for them to be able to make a choice. But as we saw this week when she was asked directly about those very same rights as they pertain to trans folks, mm -hmm. she went to a straight line conversation on I follow federal policy. And that was a miss. It undermines the previous conversation where she talks about choice, but she doesn't ex extend that same choice to trans folks. That's the fear. Um, she, she had a misstep there. Um, I think that she's also had some issues with recent conversations she's had on Palestine. When it's come up, she's given us a little bit of the word salad um, at the CNN town hall. She didn't give us any real answers, and it wasn't personal. So a lot of folks are looking to her to say, you know, do you care about the issues I care about? Even if we have different stances, do you even care about what's affecting me? And she hasn't been able to really show people that she does care. Just on trans issues in particular, we have seen pretty consistently in ad in campaign ads from Donald Trump and other Republicans, frankly, that issue being mobilized in tax against their opponents. What do you make of what we're seeing in that regard and how it's landing with undecided voters, especially? You know, a lot of undecided voters are tired of the attacks, right? What they're saying is that they're they're kind of exhausted by the negativity that, in a lot of ways, was brought on by the Trump campaign. Um, but VP Harris has begun to participate. We, we see this kind of um, pendulum-like swing where once he's got some negative ads and she responds with negative ads. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is that we don't hear a lot about policy. And so what a lot of young people and undecideds are saying is that while they're listening and hearing this back and forth between these two candidates, they're not getting a good picture of what either one of them will actually do. We've got Project 2025, so they know where Trump stands, but they're asking VP Harris, where do you stand? And she has yet to answer these questions because she's so busy defending herself against a lot of these baseless attacks from, from Trump. Jen, you just just described this as a choice between two candidates. That's mostly how we frame our conversations here on Balance of Power as well. And yet there are other individuals on the ballot in yes, a lot are. of these states, like Jill Stein. Do you expect she'll actually be a factor? Could she be a disruptor in the ultimate result? You know, I will say the Socialist Party, right, is running two fantastic candidates right now, Claudia and Karina. Um, mm. A lot of folks feel a lot of energy behind the Green Party with Jill Stein and Butch Ware. Um, and I have been hearing from young people that they are considering Jill Stein and Butch Ware as a, a valid alternative because Jill Stein is speaking specifically to the refugee populations around the world and to the issues in Palestine. So it, it's, it's, not, it's not certain if this will be something where, you know, this is not another year like Ross Perot, where we're seeing a 19 percent uh, vote get. Uh, but I do think it'll be surprising to see how many people get behind these alternative tickets because these candidates are speaking directly to the issues that VP Harris continues to struggle on. 
Well, and it's not just VP Harris or, or Donald Trump, for that matter, who are making the cases themselves. They also have surrogates doing it for them on the campaign trail. And in some instances, these surrogates are either powerful political and popular political figures or celebrities. Like today in Texas or this evening, Kamala mm -hmm. Harris will be joined by Beyonce. And I just wonder, Jen, if you think that makes a real difference, that power of celebrity. You know, I think that in a lot of ways, VP Harris has uh, taken her cues from Trump. And I think yeah. that's been a little bit of a mistake, right? I think the celebrity, the leaning into the podcast culture, um, moving toward a kind of Beyonce moment, no shade to Beyonce, but Beyonce is 43 <laughs> years old. Beyonce is from my generation. And the votes that Kamala Harris needs to get are not from people who listen to and support a Beyonce uh, brand. She needs to be speaking to folks who are teetering, folks who are unsure. These are young, often educated white young Americans who are thinking about where they stand on a host of issues and they're asking for policy. So while she's out hanging out with celebrities, like, you know, Trump has done, um, it's 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 costing her with people who are waiting to hear real policy from her. So while this may get her some of those viral moments that she wants, it may get her some popularity among people who are excited about her already. Um, but I don't see this actually making any nudge on the folks that she really needs to be speaking to right now. The suggestion that Beyonce is old is kind of breaking my brain a little bit. I feel like she is immortal. She transcends no, no, generations, no. Jen. We're the same generation, <laughs> she and I. It's just that they, they, think, they think that she's old. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, finally, as we consider creating these viral moments, obviously Donald Trump trying to do a little bit of that today as well. Part of the reason he was in Texas is to sit down in Austin with Joe Rogan. Should Kamala Harris also try to go talk to Joe Rogan? I don't think so, right? I think we saw this again with the town hall this week where, where Trump didn't even show up, right? I think it's okay if uh, she chooses not to be in certain conversations in certain rooms. I think that Fox News interview is a good example. Um, some of those conversations end up de doing more harm than good. So I don't think that's necessary for her right now. She really needs to get through some policy to these folks who are confused and not sure. And she also really needs to make sure that people are getting to know who she is, not just as a candidate, but but as a human being, not as the VP, not as a politician, but as a person. This is how folks like Bill Clinton have been so charismatic and have won over the American public in the past. This is what she needs to do as someone who's relatively new to a lot of young people who are sometimes voting for the first time. Has Tim Walls helped her in that, Jen? I think Tim Walls helped her at the beginning because he's so lovable and he's so kind and gentle. Uh, but I think that the Tim Walls introduction only has so much uh, leeway, right? It only has so much rope. I think you can go on on these exciting moments as long as you can, but if there's not any that anything to back it up, there's not much there, unfortunately. So for for VP Harris's uh, campaign right now, she's going to have to push really hard these next couple of days, and she's going to have to breathe some more energy into her campaign because right now she's she's falling a bit behind.